grab your Bible and get ready for a great study. This is Talking Scripture. Hey everybody, welcome to Talking Scripture. My name is Gary and I'm so thankful that you're joining me here tonight as I'm coming to you live like I do each week from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. And It was a kind of a nasty rainy day today and uh, the sun was shining just a few minutes ago and uh, so hopefully the rain's about done but uh, you know we need the rain just like we need everything else but talking about more rain tomorrow so I sure hope some of this rain uh, gets to places like Florida that needs it because I know a lot of people down there is suffering from a pretty extreme drought going on down there and a lot of forest fires and everything we need to keep them in your prayers keep uh, Manchester England in your prayers from the terrorist attack there this morning and uh, so we've got a lot of stuff we need to be praying for and tonight we're going to be looking into the book of Philippians chapter number three and we're going to be we're going to be talking about our our uh, confidence where's our confidence at do we have confidence in ourselves do we have or do we have confidence in the things of God and that's something we need to uh we need to know where our confidence is at because where our confidence is is how we're going to be living our life and so often we have it misplaced in places we shouldn't have our confidence and uh, we're going to take a look from the apostle Paul who better to learn from um there in Philippians chapter number three and we're that's where we're going to be at tonight uh as you're turning there I want to welcome those that are in the chat room tonight if you got any prayer requests or anything feel free to put them in there and I'll I'll pray for them at the end of the broadcast and throughout the week as well um but I got this story I got in Swindoll's ultimate book of illustrations and quotes and it, he says tells about a woman in her 80s that was determined she would keep driving Naturally, her family was concerned about her slower reflexes. She would go out at night alone. So they were disturbed about her safety. They told her about muggings and kidnappings and carjackings, and they thought that it would keep her at home. But you know what? It didn't. Instead, she went out. She bought a gun, a thirty-eight Special. She didn't know a thing about handling a gun, but she loaded it up and shoved it in her purse. She decided that she would use it, if someone gave her problems. Well, she was walking out of the store during the Christmas season with her packages, and she looks over and sees these three guys in a car, and they're slamming the door. She thinks, this is my moment, so she reaches in her purse, pulls out her gun, walks right up to the car window and says, get out of my car, get away from behind that steering wheel. You guys move. Three guys got out and ran in three different directions. By now, a crowd had gathered. And they were staring at her, staring at her, smiling. She was feeling pretty proud of herself. So she put her gun in her purse and got her keys out. And the keys didn't fit. It wasn't her car. Hmm. Guess mistakes can happen to the best of us, can't they? <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to jump into our study tonight in Philippians chapter number 3. Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the rain that we had here, Lord, and and Father, I just pray for people that need the rain so desperately, God, that you would send those beneficial rains uh, to those locations around the world, Father. And Lord, I just pray for, for the people of Great Britain today, Lord, that suffered from that tragedy this morning. And I just pray that your comfort be upon those people and help it to to draw people back to you, Father. And Lord, I ask that you bless our time that we have together right now, Lord. That you open our hearts and minds to hear from you, God. I thank you for each person that's listening live right now and each person that will be listening to this. And I just pray that you meet their needs as only you can. Father, bless this time we have together, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to hear from you. And Father, I ask as humbly as I know how that you forgive me where I failed you. And that you speak your words through me tonight. This is your time. Use it to bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. I had said at the top of the broadcast that a lot of times we put our, our confidence in the wrong places. We put our confidence in things. We put our confidence in in 
all other areas that we don't really need to have it. And that's what Paul is talking about here. And he opens up chapter 3 of the book of Philippians and says, Finally, finally means he's changing his topic. He's, he's moving the conversation along, if you will. He says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice means to be happy. It means that we should be, be happy about what the things that God is doing in our lives. But it's kind of hard to know what God's doing in our lives if we're not paying attention for Him, if we have our focus on other areas. He says, To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. He's reminding this Philippian church to be to be happy in the Lord, and then he's he's telling him he's writing the same things again. And as you study through the book of Philippians, some of the same topics are are covered numerous times because these are things that's important for them to understand. It's things that's important for us to apply to our lives. And Paul wants to make sure that you get it. You know, I spent many years as a restaurant manager in a fast food restaurant, Chick Fil A specifically. And the only way that you could properly train somebody is for them to do something by repetition. I mean, you could have them sitting there watching hours and hours and hours of videotape learning how to do something, but unless you put that, that unless you get in there and actually start doing it, you're never going to know how to really do it. You could say, yeah, I, I watched a video on how to, how to bread a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, but no, I've, I've never done it. And if you've never done it, then no, you don't really know how. And the more times you do it, the better you become the better the, the, the chicken looks, the better the the outcome is. And it's likewise, it's the same way in the Christian faith. The more times that we exercise our faith, the more times that we put our trust in God, the more times we put our confidence in Him, that's going to help us to get better at building our faith. It's going to help us get better at our confidence being in the Lord Jesus. You know, you don't, you don't have to teach a child how to be bad. You don't have to teach a child how to tell a lie. You don't have to teach a child how to do something wrong. Instead, we need to, that's, that's our nature. That's our sin nature. We are born sinners. We are born apart from God. No one has to teach us how to, how to sin. No one has to teach us how to how to lie. No one has has to teach us how to be angry. No one has to teach us how to do those things the Bible speaks against. Instead, we need to be taught how to do things right. And what Paul is saying, that to me to write the same things to you is not grievous. Paul's saying, I don't mind writing the same things to you. Why? Because this is important. You need to understand it. You need to to be able to you need to be able to live the life that that I've I'm, I'm teaching you how to live here. And then he's going to go on here, and he's going to start in in talking about some talking about evil things here. He says in verse two, "Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision." Now, as we as we get into these verses here and we start really studying these verses, we're going to see the word concision and we're going to see circumcision. Now let me give a, a, a as easy of an explanation of these as I possibly can. And I hope, and, and for those that are listening live, if, if you need me to explain something a little more, please make a note or put something in the chat room so I know that we need to talk about it a little bit. Because this is something that's, that's very, very, very important. The concision was Jews who professed to be Christians. Jews who professed to be Christians. But they, he refers to them as the concision because, because they put a, a confidence in being circumcised. You see, that was, that was the trademark, if you will, of the Jewish nation, nation. That was the trademark that you were a Jew, that you were part of God's chosen people. And for these Jews now, that after Jesus had resurrected from the grave, these Jews now, they believed in the message of Jesus, but they didn't believe fully that his death 
on the cross was enough. They were teaching people that you still had to go through the circumcision process. It doesn't matter if you're eight weeks old like or eight days old like you would have been in, in this time frame, or if you were 108 years old. If you gave your life to Christ, you weren't truly saved until you were circumcised. And for these Gentiles, who the Philippians would have been Gentiles, they wouldn't have been, most likely would not have been circumcised. That was a thing that that signified being Jewish. That was a thing that was the trademark of the Jews. So Paul, when he's calling them the concision, to be translated back, that means mutilators of the flesh. In other words, what Paul is saying here is that that they were teaching false doctrines and they that circumcision thing has absolutely no merit no more. Go with me, if you will, to the book of Romans, chapter number 2. Romans chapter 2. And we're going to look at here verse number 28 and 29. Romans chapter 2. Verses 28 and 29. Paul says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. So what Paul is saying here, what Paul is teaching his church at Rome, is he was saying that, that you're not a Jew outwardly. The outward sign that you were a Jew, that you were one of God's chosen people, was that you were circumcised. And Paul's saying he's not not everybody that was circumcised was is is a Jewish person. Paul's talking about a deeper circumcision here. And verse 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. See, here's a key principle that we need to understand if we're going to understand what Paul is teaching his church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 2. So stay with me here. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. What did Jesus say in, in Matthew chapter 6? He says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your heart, your heart is, a, for lack of a better way to put it, center of your body. Your heart has desires. Your heart and your mind a lot of times fight a battle against each other. In my heart, I want to follow and do the things God wants me to do. In my mind... I want to do the things which I know how to do, the things that that come natural to me. So when we have the circumcision of the heart, we're, we're having a repentance, we're having a change of mind, we're getting away from the things of this world and focusing in on the things of God. We're cutting away the desires of the flesh, we're cutting away the desires of the heart, we're cutting away our desire for sinful things. 1 John, chapter number 2. Stay in Romans there. I'm just going to read a verse to you here. A couple of verses to you here. 1 John, chapter number 2, verse 15. Or let's start in verse 14. Eh, 15 is good. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So you see, we need to get that part taken off. We need to get that part circumcised from our hearts, our love for the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, we need that to be circumcised from us. We need that to be cut away. And here in, in Romans chapter 2, he says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision, the circumcision that matters, that truly matters, is that of the heart, in the spirit, 
and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God.